Welcome to this program, and there are many programs ahead of us, uh, we shall not go into all that. Uh, what we have before us is program number 165, and we are still talking the word of God, Jesus Christ, as a, our Lord and Savior. So we shall be talking about Jesus Christ being Lord, he's our Lord, but let us pray before we go into that. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Lord, I thank you that you have given us time to come before you, to present ourselves before you, and before your word, I pray that your word shall come forth to every person that is viewing this uh, uh, broadcast, and you shall save them, deliver them, and help them that to, to see that you are Lord. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And so, we, in broad terms, we are talking about knowledge of God, knowing God. And we are saying it's a relationship, therefore, it is knowing from the heart, from the, the inner man, the man of the spirit. Knowing God from the man of the spirit. So that's what we've been talking about. But now we are talking about knowing Jesus Christ as Lord. We have been talking about Jesus Christ as Savior. We must know him as Lord. You see, we are walking with him. It's a walk. For, for those that are saved, it's a walk. So the first uh, and elementary knowledge that we all need is to know Jesus Christ as our Savior. He has saved us. But as we walk with him, there has to come a time when we acknowledge that he's Lord. He's Lord. You see, you cannot call a baby Lord. And, and ordinarily, because a baby does not have authority, a baby does not, not have any position of honor, a baby is a baby. So you don't call a baby Lord. But a, a baby or a, a young person or a child can call a, a, a senior person Lord because you are senior, you have authority, and so on and so on. So, so this is the picture we are, we are giving here. If you do not know Jesus Christ as Lord, then you could be seeing him as a baby in the, in the manger when he was born. 
And then there could be those who are still, still presenting Jesus Christ as, as a baby in the manger. We have to get to a place where we see him as Lord. And in terms of knowledge of God, what we are discussing and, uh, for a number of programs, we are basing that on two scriptures mainly. That is Amos 3.3, 3, can two walk together and let's greet. Two people cannot successfully walk together without agreement. So we must agree in this walk with our God and more so with our Lord Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is the one who is really with us in the walk and he helps us to see Jesus Christ even as Lord because he's our guide, he's our teacher, the Holy Spirit. And we have covered all that. But I'm trying to emphasize the question of Jesus Christ being seen by us as Lord. The Holy Spirit helps us to see him in that more senior position. We are also basing our, 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 our discussions on uh, Isaiah chapter 11, verse 9. Uh, the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. The, the way the waters cover the sea, and there's a lot of water uh, on earth, uh, that's the way the, the knowledge of, of, of the Lord should cover also, uh, also the earth, full, fill the earth. So, so with that background, now we are looking at the knowledge, our knowledge, my knowledge, your knowledge of Jesus Christ as Lord. And as long as you call him Lord, if he passes by, you salute. Let's think natural, because if you think natural, you'll be a better person even to think spiritually. He, the person you respect, I, let's consider some of you may have been in armed, armed forces, maybe you're in, in armed forces, and all those positions where there's marching, and there is a lot of authority, which you are expected to be very, very obedient. So if a, 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 junior, uh, a junior soldier uh, is sitting, and then a senior person comes passing by, the junior one will quickly stand and salute. Why? Because they are given instructions to, to obey and, and also to respect their seniors. Even on the road, when the, the, the traffic police is on the road, and then there is another senior police, and they are able to recognize that, they quickly do that, even without thinking, and they salute. Just recognizing that other person is a senior person. So this aspect of Lord is a question of seniority, a higher position. So we, as we walk with, the, with, with him in a relationship, nevertheless, we must respect his position in our lives as Lord. That means he has authority over us of our lives. If you don't do that, you will have a problem. Why? Because he will give instructions and you will not obey. This is what this thing is about. And he, he will be talking, and you are also talking, and you are not even listening to what he's saying because you don't regard him as anything. You don't regard his authority as Lord. We see in uh, the book of uh, Matthew, the highlights of him being Lord. Chapter 3, verse 3. For this is who was spoken by, uh, of by prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. So, so it's a quotation here, and we are saying this is what was being said and prophesied by, by prophet Isaiah. The voice, this is John the Baptist, really, that is being quoted here. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. So you see, that preparation, and we have dealt with the issue of preparation. God wants people that prepare. Now, and here we are saying, this Jesus, even when he was coming to be born, it was still necessary for preparations to be done. But we know he was not properly received. And let's not go into all those details. But Prophet Isaiah was prophesying of John the Baptist declaring and telling the people, prepare the way of the Lord. Huh? Not prepare the way of a baby. Prepare the way of the Lord. 
because, just like I've said in saluting and everything else, if a junior person knows that a senior person is coming, and I like quoting the armed forces because their authority has to be felt, and people have to obey, all those things are dealt with there very effectively. So as a junior person, if he knows that a senior person is coming, then there is need for preparation, and a lot of preparation, so that uh, you, you'll be re recognized that you know that you have someone important, someone senior coming. You know, you are junior, and you know, and the whole thing is uh, working in you, you have that respect. So preparation is very important. And this is what uh, John was proclaiming uh, when he came. So Matthew, again, Matthew chapter 4, verse 7, Jesus said to him, it is written. Now, this is when Jesus was being tempted. And the devil is, is, is telling him to, to worship him, and so on and so on. Uh, it is written, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. You shall not tempt the Lord your God. So, so it is written. You don't tempt the Lord. He is your God. So you don't do that. So Jesus is Lord. Luke chapter 7, verse 6. Then Jesus went with them, and when he was already not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Therefore, I did not even think myself worthy to come to you, but say the word, and my servant will be healed. We have touched on that scripture elsewhere. But here, this man is addressing, although he sent messages, eh? friends, eh? to talk to him, but he is making sure that the language is very clear. Tell him, Lord, call him Lord on my behalf. Tell him, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I'm not worthy. I'm so junior, I'm so low in, low in authority, my premises, my house cannot accommodate you, cannot receive you, because of the, 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 how far down I am with my house. Please don't come. That is not like uh, Katia's. It's not, it, it doesn't look Katia's. Because he's the one who called for him. But he's saying, it is for the same reason I did not come before you. Because I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy to pre even to come before you. That's why I sent people. I could not even come myself before you. Please, I'm not worthy. Lord, I'm not worthy. Please don't come. And remember, he called for him. He wanted his, his servant to be, to be, to be healed. So, if you take it from that, Jesus commended that man. I have never seen faith like this, not even in Israel. <laughs> That's what Jesus said. And because he's Lord over every situation, he's Lord over the sickness of the servant. And he's just expressing himself. I have never seen faith like this. Not in, even in Israel. Because this man was not uh, a Jew. He was like a foreigner. But he had so much faith in Jesus. And whereas the others are rubbing on him, they are playing around him, they are not really seeing him the way the centurion man is seeing him. Lord, don't come. I'm not worthy. So that's the way we should behave around our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I'm not worthy. Yes, we are walking with him. Yes, we are in a journey. But inside, remember, he is Lord. And you should always feel, I'm not worthy. I'm not clean enough. Wash me so that I can come nearer you because I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. So it's very important for us as Christians to give him that position of Lord so that... Uh, Though we walk with him, we are not uh, walking very presumptuously. We are recognizing his position. We are recognizing his authority of our lives. And when now we talk with him or talk to him, 
he's going to acknowledge that you know why he's here, you know who he is, and you know that he has authority over our situations. Because we have many situations. And I don't know what situation is around you. I don't know the situation that is around you. Because we have many situations. But whatever situation that you are facing, whatever challenge that you are facing, I want you to know that the Lord is Lord in that, uh, concerning that situation. And he's able to see you through. He's able to deliver you. He's able to heal you. He's able to, to, to put that family together that is breaking. He's able to heal and deliver those children that are in trouble. That they may go in chaotic. The children that may be in drugs. They are drinking themselves to death. They are in very wrong marriages. He is Lord over every situation. So concerning this particular aspect, the servant, when the people who have been sent to tell him, Lord, do not, do not trouble yourself, do not come, because I'm not worthy. Those who are sent, they did not receive any other word or anything to, to, to talk about heal, uh, healing or to talk about the disease. So they went back to the centurion. On arrival, they found the servant healed. You see, people in authority don't have to say many words. And more so, when they are dealing with the people who know that they have authority, they don't have to say a lot of words. But you see, the problem can be you don't know that he has authority. It's like he has to introduce himself. And many people don't know how to introduce themselves. They, they, they feel a, a little awkward. Can someone introduce me, say who I am, tell them who I am? So many people don't know how to say who they are. I had a case, and, and in this case, I was uh, in, a, in, a, in a vehicle with someone who was, who was a multi-billionaire, and he had a huge uh, uh, premises. Uh, his company had a huge premises with many people employed, and so on and so on. And uh, we were driving into the premises. But uh, the guard, the watchman, did not recognize him. They did not know him. He was employed by other people. He was taken there to be a guard at the gate. And when we were driving in with the owner of the premises, the guard, the watchman, did not know him. So instead of opening the gate, he came to the driver, who is the boss, and he, wa he, wanted, uh, he was asking him to produce his ID, the, ID, the ID identity card, and to say who he was and the person he was going to see in the company. So this man kept quiet because he doesn't know what to say. He's the owner of the premises. He's the one who has employed the, 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 the boss of this uh, watchman. He, he owns everything. And this watchman is saying, bring your ID. Leave it here. And give, give me your name. And then tell me the person you are going to see. And he's not opening the gate. So I saw this boss, this man, stuck. He cannot say a word. Then I realized that this is not going to work well. It's not going to be a nice thing if I continue uh, keeping quiet. So I had to introduce, I had to say to the, this watchman, this is the owner of this, this company. So the, the watchman did not know me. But from what he, he saw, he realized, I'm going to lose my job. Even without getting instructions from his boss, he quickly opened the door or the gate, and we drove in. I'm here to introduce yet another person that you may not know. Our Lord Jesus Christ as Lord. He's the owner. He's the owner of the premises. And he's saying, Revelation 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I'll come in and dine with him and he with me. The owner of the premises, 
the owner of this life because he has bought us with a price. He has purchased you with a price. You belong to him. He's, he owns you. But nevertheless, he's saying, please open. Open the gate. Open the door. That, that's a, that was a very good example for what we are saying. So I have come to tell you, please, listen. The owner wants to come in. He owns you. He owns this temple. He wants to come in. And when he comes in, all will be well. You continue receiving your salary. You continue with that marriage. You sort it out. You will continue with your business, making profit, because he will sort it out. Those children that are giving you trouble, he will sort them out for you. I don't know what else. I don't know what else that is bothering you. But when the owner of the premises comes, everything will be fine. It is dining. Not to, not, not to do spiritual warfare anymore. If you have been fighting alone, if you have been struggling, been, you have been on spiritual warfare all the time, he wants to come and take over, and there will be no more spiritual warfare. He will deliver you, heal you, give you peace, because he is the prince of peace. He has everything that you consider to be a good thing. I'm here to tell you that. At least I help the watchman. At my level, I, I rescued him because he was going to be sacked. Not because he was not uh, doing his job. He was doing the job, but nevertheless, he did not recognize the, the owner of the premises. The handling of the owner of the premises was not right, was not good. And the owner remained very calm, not responding, but I knew if it went on for a long time, it was, not going, to be, it was going to be nasty. And let me tell you, it will be nasty for you if it goes on and on and on, and then you leave this, this, this world, you go into the next life, things will not be nice for you. So I'm encouraging you. I'm telling you, this is our Lord. He's the master. He's the one that owns the premises. And for a while and for now, it's like he has to keep waiting for you to open the gate or the door for that matter. Please open the door. Allow him to be master over your life. Praise the Lord. Uh, Matthew chapter 8, verse 25. <clears throat> then his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us. We are perishing. But he said to them, why are you so, uh, so fearful? You of little faith. Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea. And there was a great calm. So the men marveled, saying, Who can this be that even the winds and the sea obey him? Again, the disciples were in the boat, and then there was trouble in the sea. The boat was being rocked on every side. They, 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 were, they were drowning, as it were. Jesus was calm. He was just sleeping. Then they went to him, Master, Lord, Lord, we are dying. We are dying. They called him Lord. You see, when you are in trouble, you, 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 don't, you have to recognize the authority. Oh, yes, just think, just think. You have issues that are beyond you, issues that your friends are not able to deal with. Because in the boat, there were other people, they had friends. They were not able to deal with the issues. And you could be in the same position. You are not able to deal with the issues. Your colleagues may not help you. You go for a more senior person. You go for another level. And if you clean up all the help from doctors and from specialists, from consultants, nobody, if nobody helps you, then you think, what next? Then you think, 
Could it be that there are supernatural powers somewhere? There is a God somewhere who can help because the doctors are not able to help you, uh, other professionals and consultants, and they are not able to help you, and we always get these cases where the problem is beyond your colleagues, beyond the people you know, then what next? And I see them over and over again. After people have gone round and round and round and round, they come and say, Pastor, please pray. Pray because this is what we are facing. We have been to every hospital. We have been to with consultants. And uh, we have not gotten help. So that's when they think spiritual. They think of the Lord. Others think elsewhere. And we are not going to touch those things. We are not thinking those places they go to get supernatural help, supernatural power. So we are saying when the issues are beyond us, we have to think what other level. Is there another level? Is there yet another level remaining that I may go there also and get my help? So that's the way people think. So in this case, they were perishing, they were dying. I don't know how much Jesus, uh, while, while he was on earth, how much he knew about the waters and the fishing and all that, because he, he never went fishing. But here he was in the sea with them. With them. They, most of them were, were fishermen. So they knew how to behave in the sea, I believe, because they were fishermen. Jesus was not a fisherman, so I don't think he was so familiar here on earth, uh, being a, a human being for that matter, for that time, I don't think he was so familiar with the fishing and the way to deal with the sea and all that. But he's Lord over the waters and the winds. So when they were stuck in that situation, in that problem, then they, they went to him and they said, Lord, we are perishing. And when Jesus woke up and looked at what was happening, He's saying, where is your faith? Oh, you of little faith. And he rebuked the wind. And the whole thing was calm. He said, peace. The sea was calm. The wind was calm. And the people are wondering. Again, I guess most of them were apostles, uh, disciples. They were saying, who can this be that even the winds and the sea obey him? He is Lord. That's all. He is Lord. I don't know what is that that is bothering you. He, it is going to obey him. When he gives command, that sickness, that disease, that heartache thing, he gives command, it will be peace. And I am speaking peace in that area. I am speaking healing in that area. I am speaking deliverance in that area, whatever it is that is bothering you. When the Lord comes, because he's Lord of our situations, it is peace, 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 peace. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Lord, I thank you for everyone that has heard your word. I pray that in their situations, whatever it is that they are going through, the rejection, the pain, the sorrow, having lost their loved one. Lord, I pray that you step in. And I pray that you minister peace in that area. I pray that you minister deliverance. I pray that you minister justice. I pray, O oh God, that they shall experience your presence as Lord. Lord, concerning the thing that is beyond them, the thing that is aching their lives, so be with everyone that has come on board. And now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you for to rest before the presence of his glory with the exceeding joy to God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen.